They're investigating Elon Musk now. Yes. They're going after him. Because he allegedly didn't hire enough non-U.S. citizens. I think that's the story. That yeah, let's, familiar, yeah, Lydia, can you look that up? Yeah, uh, uh, Elon Musk investigated for hiring non-U.S. citizens, which is a little bit mind-boggling. But I think in the Justice Department, you have a either, mandatory either way, bro, thing that you need to hire non-U.S. citizens. E e either way, the issue is Elon Musk may be, I think he's the second richest guy on the planet. They will come after yeah, him. That's the article. They do not like yeah, him. Yeah, you found it. He's not in the club. But the reality is the club is falling apart. Yeah, and I think it says it in the second byline there. Uh, the DOJ's the immigrant and employee rights section said it received a complaint of employment discrimination from a non-U.S. citizen in May and said SpaceX refused to comply with a subpoena for relevant documents related to hiring. My mind is blown. Yeah. Well, there you go. I know that he's pretty oh, here harsh about who he hires look, look, look. and fires. The U.S. Department of Justice is investigating SpaceX over whether the company discriminates against non-U.S. citizens in its hiring, according to court documents filed on Thursday. That's insane. Oh, wow. What? That is crazy. I remember reading you that can't? a couple of days ago and reporting on it on my channel. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. They're going after him for that? You can't what? discriminate against... Uh, that. Listen, we're America. We're not... Uh, look, look. You know what they I They don't have social listen. security numbers. No, yeah. I don't know. Yep. How's that supposed like, to work? Listen, how? <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it painfully obvious right now what's happening? Hmm. The club. Let's, okay, so we talked about something a while ago about, I, I think it was last week I was talking about Hillary Clinton losing. And I was like, I always thought the game was rigged. You know, I was huh. just like, what's the point of voting? And then Donald Trump won. And I was like, huh, I guess you really can get your candidate to win. That restored my faith in the system. All right. But then I wondered, how is it that he won? Like, Certainly the establishment elites who manipulate media and manipulate the markets could have wrangled up enough effort to to win. And I'm not talking about fraud or cheating. I'm talking about, you know, mail-in voting systems, about changing laws, about, you know, uh, um, running stories like what they're doing right now about silver, just blatantly yeah, right, right, wrong, right, right, right. Just wrong outright stories. Over I mean. Manipulation. And it's because they didn't un they underestimated the Internet and the meme magic. No joke. Mm -hmm. Trump was memed into the presidency. And they overestimated Hillary Clinton. Definitely. Maybe a little definitely. Bit, yeah. Yep. And so then I started to think maybe the, the, the establishment elites who normally have, a, have an airtight control of the media and the narrative and the system are, are slipping. They're losing their grip. Now you look at what's going on with GameStop, the GameStop stocks, and it's like they, they're losing their grip. The hedge funds are, are, are bleeding out cash. Now you look at how the media responded with this, what looks to be a coordinated smear campaign to trick regular Americans into buying up this SLV, losing money. But we can see right through it now. It's almost like, you know, the Wizard of Oz and they pulled the curtain back and we can see the man behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. And, he's, and like, he's still going. Just close my eyes and they won't see me. <laughs> right. See me, yeah. when, when I was on the show, one of the first times, you were like, what do we do? What's the solution? I'm like, memes. And you're like, what do you mean memes? What are you talking about? <laughs> and I'm right. like, dude, you don't get it, man. There's a whole culture that even Popeyes is picking up on. And the memes are, are literally the ones dude. that are waking people up and are more effective than a lot of the mainstream media propaganda. Lydia? The cathedral is terrified of memes. I think ever since Trump was elected, I think watching this GameStop yeah. stuff is really making it worse. Yeah, there's a lot of even uh, documents that are uncovered and I have to refresh myself and I don't want to speak out of hand here. And I and I think they well, were referred to, to, your water. To, uh, <laughs> to special operations talking about meme warfare that was released by Edward Snowden. I have to double check, Ooh, but, but th th there's this is something that of course government agencies see as a massive threat and I, I think that I think the memes, I mean, they're, they're viral right now. I, I'm, I'm tweeting and I'm Instagramming a whole bunch of them all the time because just in that one simple image, in that simple re representation, you're able to get across ideas so much more effectively than any video, than any photo, than any article, than any other kind of media form. And it's really its own form and, and the shares and the clicks and the way that this spreads is just exactly how this whole Reddit movement started and exactly how it, it, it has a momentum and has an energy. And, and when you look at even you know the Epstein situation, no one even knew about it until the memes started coming out yeah. and that hashtag started coming out. So so this is key and essential. And, and looking at the memes now, things are mo looking in favor of the Redditors. There's, there's something really interesting. Jon Stewart, I guess, joined Twitter recently. <laughs> yeah. And he tweeted cheering on the, the Redditors. He, he joined Twitter. Did I say Reddit? He joined Twitter yeah. and started no, cheering. No, you on. said Twitter. Okay. He started, and now he's cheering on the Redditors and GameStop saying, good, kick it to Wall Street, you know, take them for what they're worth. Jimmy Kimmel... <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't find this tweet. I, got, I don't know if Jimmy Kimmel deleted it, but a bunch of people were sharing it. Yeah, I saw it. Apparently, he said, real Donald Trump, is this you? Or something like that. <laughs> that you? Dude, and he is obsessed. Well, no, no, no. Someone made a really good point. Jon Stewart is an old school liberal who has been out of the game for several years. 
he's probably been minding his own business for the most part, not realizing the, sh- the realignment that's occurred. Jimmy Kimmel is realignment left. So he's a mock. He's mocking uh, uh, John Stewart. John Stewart comes out and says the right thing is a leftist and he gets he gets accused of being Trump. And you look at what CNN said. Trumpism explains what's going on with with CNN. Jimmy you know? Kimmel has has lost. I mean, this is maybe I'm just preaching to the choir. This is obvious, but he is completely gone. Well, if you, if <laughs> you look gone. at I he's mean, gone. he's done. I was going to say something yeah. kind of offensive, you know, that term off the Native American but the whole phrase <laughs> off the reservation is a very racist yeah, phrase I've come to is learn it, but and I, I didn't know the origin it just means something about a Native American leaving and then it's like that makes them crazy or something wow. like that I don't know yeah. well it's also back to Jimmy Kimmel here I mean when you look at him you look at his eyes he, he looks beaten wow. he looks defeated he looks like I, you know, I don't want to kind of expound on here, but but he looks like he's not there. He looks like he's just absolutely miserable doing his job. Yes. He, look, yeah. look, when I, when I see a lot of these people in media, Colbert and Kimmel and these like late night hosts, there's no passion. Nope. They don't care. It's like, dude, give me the script and I'll read it. Okay, so uh, Russian bots are buying stock. And uh, what's that line? Mm-hmm. Redditor? What is what, what's that? Redditor? When he, when he gave I don't that, know what that is. That talk, oh, they're bad guys. And I would advise everyone to go watch this Kimmel talk. It's 30 seconds long, and he t- and he mentions that the Redditors might be Russian assets. Did Russian he, bots. Yes. Did he write that, or did his writers write that and hand it to him, and he just went with it? This it's the really, cathedral, man. It's disgusting. The cathedral. What, the, what does Russia have anything to do with these yeah. Russian people? With these, with these Russian yeah. people. Russian well, people. Russian people. Lot, yeah. It starts with an lot, R. Actually, a There's lot. alliteration involved. Tours, well, Bloomberg yeah. even went on to describe people a part of this larger movement as insurrectionists. So did the former SEC chairman. Uh, so we have to understand that this is aggressive language that we're seeing towards poor people playing the market and outsmarting the people who used to play the market, you know, the hedge funds. This reminds me of Occupy Wall Street. Because mm. at Occupy Wall Street, the banks began to rupture. You could well, see their terror. Um, the whole industry was like, well, you know what? The jig is up. It's it, we're we're done for. Let's save as many of our necks as we can because they're we're, yeah, it, it, it's but, over. But just really quick, I want to make a point here. What made Occupy Wall Street prominent because it was ignored for a very, very long time was a disproportionate response by the state. They were extremely aggressive and they hit back very hard. And it, there was one pepper spray incident that really went viral that started everything. Tony Baloney. Tony Baloney, exactly. And it was literally overreaction by the state. We're seeing another overreaction by the authorities by the establishment right now as we're speaking with this absurdity that some people are calling news. Let, let me let me tell you, Luke, democracy dies in darkness. Did you know this? Ah, I heard the that Washington that, Post that phrase from which is the Bezos Times uh, in their in their op ed about the hedge funds being the good guys. Let me read a passage for you. They oh, said yes. this time is different. The GameStop speculators are not merely in a frenzy about one stock. Their goal is to destroy the traders who link stock prices to fair value. To suggest a political analogy, they are not just blindly devoted to their candidate. They deny the legitimacy of the opposition party. They are not just acting within the system. They want to overthrow the system. It's as though, just imagine, a rabble gripped by conspiracy theories were to attack the rules of democracy itself. The name GameStop is apt. Do you know what that passage is saying? They're saying the Redditors are the same thing as Trump supporters. And the action they're taking is the same as the insurrection is, is the is, they're calling it, you know, essentially the insurrection attacking democracy itself. The who, storming of the Capitol. Who wrote that, by the way? Uh, he. Oh, you're gonna like this, Luke. This is Sebastian Malaby. He's the Paul A. Volcker Senior Fellow for International Economics, the Council on Foreign Relations. Oh, okay. Makes <laughs> oh, perfect the sense CFR. there. Yeah. Yes, I know this. You CFR. know, we have barely... They, they kicked me out of there permanently and banned me. You were walking when... around with Volcker. Yes. I had a very interesting <laughs> conversation with Mr. Paul Volcker. You could look it up on We Are Change. He was actually very nice, but he was lost. So I was literally telling him where to go into a secret VIP room that he accidentally took me into. Oh, whoopsie. Because security goes <laughs> like, oh, he's clearly with him. And then that's when he brought me to Ben Bernanke, another individual who, by the way, is is also a senior advisor at Citadel, which people should know, huh. and is also the former chairman of the U.S. Federal Reserve. And Citadel owns stock, the silver stock. That's you said that's like fifty percent of their. They uh, own, I guess, they own SLV. Look, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm just basically going off of what Wall Street bets has been saying about what's huh. going on. So you went to the CFR. I kind of want to touch on this. Oh yeah, yeah, a number when, of times where they had press events, and and it was actually. This is a wild story too. It was Eric Schmidt's girlfriend who kicked me out of the CFR permanently. 
because I was always coming in there and then they kicked me out and they denied me press credentials. So I had an alias that I went under. I got in there again. Then they kicked me out. Then I had a third <laughs> alias. Did then I say your alias? I don't, I don't want to say. <laughs> I don't, say. Well, one of them, out. I'll release one of them. One of them is public and his name was Bill. Yes. And last name DeBerg. So when you read that together, <laughs> oh, it yeah. makes yeah. a statement about in. another. They didn't, they didn't notice. They didn't notice. They didn't notice. They're like, oh, you got Mr. Bill here. Let him in. Because I did the accreditation. Bill I had the credentials. They let me into the Council on Foreign Relations and they had press conferences. And I stood up, asked my question like everyone else. But the difference was I wasn't kissing butt. I wasn't throwing softballs. I went right for the gullet verbally with hardcore, legitimate, reasonable questions. That should have been asked about corruption and all these horrible things that these people do in secret that was finally exposed with this questioning. They hated it, kicked me out three times. And the fourth time, Eric Schmidt's girlfriend, because I looked who this, who this was, gave me a call personally. She's like, Luke, we know who you are. <laughs> Just stop it. You're banned. You're not coming in. We're doing this because you're going to be arrested if you step foot into the CFR. I don't care how many aliases. I don't care how many disguises you have. You're not coming in. And I'm like, ladies and ladies fine. and gentlemen, G uh, I waited outside. Who's, by who's, the way, who's Eric Schmidt again? Eric Schmidt is the former chairman of Alphabet, the former head of Google, who okay. also is right. working with the government, especially the Pentagon, on their technological advancements now, of the military. Now that you've mentioned Eric yeah. Schmidt is formerly the head of uh, Google. If you were wondering why we might get banned in the future, it's because this guy's got to sitting right here. Well, my channel was kicked out of the partner program, I think, very unfairly. I mean, if I mean, did you ever find out why? No. Oh, come on. No. He 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 he. You ambushed Eric Schmidt. And I didn't ambush. I asked him no, no, a question. No, no, ambush journalism is just a reference to you seeing him walking and going up and asking him a question. Yeah, I'm, not, like, I'm not saying it derogatory. I, I politely way. asked him about financing and fundraising. A lot of the tink thanks uh, that were tink thanks. Sorry. Good enough. Uh, you know what I'm saying <laughs> here. Think, think tanks. <laughs> think tanks that were organizing the term fake news. Because the term fake news kind of came out of nowhere, nowhere and it was galvanized as a way pushed by Hillary Clinton to go against Donald Trump, to go against independent media. And it all started, uh, according to a lot of investigative journalism, from a lot of the groups that were financed directly by him and Google. So I went up to him and I was like, hey, Eric Schmidt, let's talk about you working with Hillary Clinton on her campaign. Let's talk about you donating to her and you helping her create some of the biggest buzzwords that the media is using right now and weaponizing right now to destroy free speech. And then he looked you in the eyes and said, listen here, you little pissant. I'm going <laughs> to strip your YouTube channel from the partner program no, make it no, 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 no. he was like this is effing absurd uh you're effing crazy i'm like sir please stop cursing you're gonna get my youtube video demonetized <laughs> 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 and obviously i knew that you know but, but that's not the first time we got him uh, we also got him at another bilderberg in switzerland this is all of course as he's going to the bilderberg group meeting which the mainstream media by and large chooses not to report on even though it's 150 of the most let's, influential people come together in secret let's do, let's we, we got we got uh, hit, well, hit that point because how do these all factor in there's bilderberg davos and the council on foreign relations there's also the trilateral commission and there's groups within groups within groups and affiliations within all these different groups and I could talk about this for hours but one last thing before we segue I kind of really wanted to bring up some of the amazing positive stories we should focus on some of those here and those are of individuals who enriched themselves through this whole GameStop saga and they're doing incredible things the New York Post has an article right now that is titled college student donates GameStop gains to buy video games for sick kids and there's a large number of these individuals actually going out of their way taking profit and doing really like amazing things that are uh, that are helping people you look at the hedge funds that, that money yeah that's hedge fund money yeah hmm. exactly yeah. that what, what do hedge funds do the 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 ceo of of malvin capital is still moving forward with literally destroying and bulldozing a house next to his so he could build a tennis court that's what melvin capital is this kid he's making sure sick kids get video games he's making sure People get helped in their communities, and you see tons of these stories. There was another post on Reddit that said, this is for my father. Um, that was absolutely a tearjerker that, that talked about a lot of the bigger things, about a lot of the bigger reasons, a lot of the motive behind this, which is absolutely this, this, important to know. The story was that his dad's uh, construction company, I believe, construction, yeah. was destroyed by the housing market crisis caused by these big banks. 
And that since then, he's become like basically a destitute alcoholic who's lost the will to live. Yes. And so he's like, this is for you, dad. This is, this is you know, I love the, that. The, 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 the son has come back for vengeance against those. But who this is him. important. A lot of these Reddit kids saw their families devastated, especially in 2008. They were kicked out of their homes in the, in the housing market crisis. Last year, they had their private businesses, enterprises shut down by the lockdowns. And here they are saying, we're going to come together and we're going to play by the rules and we're going to work the market towards the benefit of everyone. We're going to literally be Robin Hood in the modern day and age. And what happens? The system conspires, colludes against them, calls them insurrectionists, calls them losers, says they're connected to Russia, says that they're going to be cutting themselves and, 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 and harming themselves. Are you kidding me? Because they made a little bit of money that they're actually spreading around to the economy. That is sick and disgusting bastardization of news and people's responsibility. If you're a journalist right now and you're not reporting on this fairly and honestly, you are not a journalist. You're a propaganda mouthpiece for the establishment elite and you have no soul with Within yourself, and I am they, sick they, of these people. They know it, yeah. and they don't care. Like when I saw that Bloomberg, that clip from Wall Street about, about the Bloomberg saying Redditors lose interest. I'm like, what are, you, what are you talking about? It's the number one post right now on Reddit telling people to buy more stock. One dude just announced he was putting a million dollars into GameStop. Ooh. A million bucks right now. Yes. Interest is not going down. They are lying. These are not journalists. They know they're propagandists for the state, and they know what they're doing. For the longest time, I've given many of them the benefit of the doubt. But each and every one of these was writing an article saying, buy silver. Redditors want you to buy silver. They know they are lying. Or they're just useful idiots who are too stupid to do their job. One thing's for sure, they're not journalists. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. So come back to check us out when we go live. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. And we are also available on all podcast platforms for free. If you want to listen to us there, thanks for hanging out and we will see you all next time.